Thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Dallas Cowboys. Now the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And Beasley with it over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Well, Charles, help me break down the Rams here as we get to the home stretch of the season because they still have one of the best records in the NFL. But after that wild Monday night win over KC on November 19th, haven't looked as sharp. And sometimes when you have a streak that they carry around and they're playing at such a high level offensively, any dip looks like the worst dip in the world. But they have had their struggles. Quarterback Jared Goff, his quarterback rating at Chicago and then again against Philadelphia in Week 15, definitely took a hit. They have not been the team we have seen before. And teams have figured out a little bit of a formula to make it harder on them offensively. But I wouldn't put it past head coach Sean McVay to get it figured out and get that team back on track. Because once they hit the playoffs, I still think they'll be a team that no one really wants to play. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he is going to have the first down as he's up to his own 13-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Big conversion. They were backed up deep to start the drive, able to pick up the first. So the goal is at least a first down here, right? Pick up a first down, give yourself some breathing room, and if you have to punt after that, maybe you've helped with field position and you've helped out your defense. And avoided a three and out on their opening drive. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. 
Now Goff. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. That catch good for five. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Give him nine on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. Take it in at the 22. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Well, partners, the Cowboys come back out here. I want to ask you to assess the season. The first couple months of the year for Dallas starting to look like they'd be sitting at home in January. Then the Amari Cooper trade comes. They breeze through November unbeaten, part of a five-game winning streak. But then a real head-scratcher, week 15, they get shut out in Indianapolis. You just wonder if all the wins that got them there, those five, which were all tough, physical, hard-hitting battles, if it took a little bit out of them before they went on the road and lost Indianapolis in week 15. But if they get to the playoffs, which it looks like they're going to, are they a threat to New Orleans? Are they a threat to Los Angeles? Are they a threat to Chicago? To me, they are only if it's a low-scoring physical affair. That's when Dallas plays at its best, and that's what they'll have to do to reduce some of those high-flying teams like New Orleans and Los Angeles. On second down, Elliott. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. Third and four, he did just enough, and I mean just enough, to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. Got an open man. It's Michael Gallup. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did. And obviously, they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, a 22. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. The first opportunity in the red zone for the Cowboys. They have a first and 10 at the 18. And that'll set him back five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. They'll throw again. Prescott throwing middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs gonna throw a little verbal trash their way, 
when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll give to Elliott. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. Give him nine there. They still need six more now on third down. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. This one caught left side by Cooper. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this one is right through. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Or just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Tackle made there by Chidabe Awuzie. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Here's Goff now on second down. Throwing right, and that's complete. First down, L.A. Goff finding Higby. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because... Number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now a play fake here on first down. Randy Gregory. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Out of the gun. Gone. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A shotgun snap for Gong. Oh, he's going to be hit and driven into the turf. Demarcus Lawrence in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, 
Give him 15. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Looking to throw. Prescott. Throw right side. Take it in by Gallup. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. So that'll back him up five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That good for 19 and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On first and 10, Prescott. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. A first down carry by Elliott. Had a good move, but only able to work it to the 20-yard line. On the stop was Aaron Donald. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. First down, Prescott. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target. And it's second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, 
incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. A second down throw for Prescott. A dump off to Elliott. Call it a gain of three, and they're going to have a third down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. The Cowboys on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Prescott from the gun. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Cole Beasley from 10 yards out. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. Extra point up and through. And the lead grows to 10 0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. Oh, the spin. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Man open. That's complete to Dalton Schultz. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. That's going to set him back five yards. Showcases the spin, a pretty good gain before he's taken down. But they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. 
And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do, especially early in the game like they have. To throw is Prescott. Step, touchdown, Dallas Cowboys. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Great play by him. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes our score 17-0. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 27. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. He finds an opening past the 40 and all the way up to the 46. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Gurley again here on first down. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? On second down, here's Goff. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Black 20. On first down, it's Gurley. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. as it moves the offense backwards. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third-and-two situation. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Here we go. 
The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. So that one will be accepted. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards. So now they need seven yards on third down. From the gun, here's Goff. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connect. Looking for Cooks and it's intercepted. Cheetah Bay Alouzier with a pick and a short return to the six yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. On second down, Prescott again. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 14. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's gonna get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in his first half. It's a first down. Prescott now 13 out of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first down. And again, it's Prescott. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Prescott on first down, and lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Well, some news that gave us a chuckle, and we could all use that around the holiday season. Josh Johnson, a great story. He was back home in Oakland when the Redskins called to see if he'd like to join him for the remainder of the season. So how did he get to know his new teammates? Well, what did he do? He turned to the Madden game, Charles. Yeah, and that's how you learn who they are, right? Learn what they do, have some tendencies, get some ideas about their speed. And what. Yeah, the ball is knocked out. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big-time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target.
To throw on second down is gone. Over the middle complete. That's Reynolds. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first down, it's gone. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. A good first down call as the screen play gets him nine. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Cut, black 20, cut. Here's Gall. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Todd Gurley standing by his lonesome in the backfield here. Second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Todd Gurley, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. Zerline good with a PAT, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there. That could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. A first down throw for Prescott. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because <laughs> they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Prescott now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. 
Prescott now from the 50. And his throw here is incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throwing again, Prescott on second and 10. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You gotta be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Prescott yet again. They bring him down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five all the way down at the two-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Hey, hey, They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after, and that'll bring up second down. Hey, we got a second here. Let's go back to week 15, following the win over Green Bay for Chicago. Happiness rained down on the field. The Bears claiming the NFC North title, but one Bear took his celebration to an extreme. I know you saw this. Yes, I certainly did. Charles Leno Jr., left tackle for the Chicago Bears. Got down on a knee and proposed to his girlfriend, Jennifer. So not only celebrating an NFC North title, 
But now, his proposal accepted by Jennifer, who will now be Mrs. Jennifer Leno Jr.? No, no Jr. <laughs> no Jr. By the way, smart move, because she's not going to say no in front of 60,000 people. Well, I've seen it happen before. Not pretty, but not in this case. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. He's got the first down and more past midfield. He gets it across the 50 and down to the 48. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. To throw is gone. Gonna throw right side here, complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And a solid run down inside the 30. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. Right. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. And Zerline's kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. Ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Prescott now on second down. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, 
when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. The give is to Elliott. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down, Prescott. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Aaron Donald in there to get him for his second sack of the night. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They needed 15, they got 15. And a good mark to boot. It's first down. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Prescott looks to throw on first. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Now back to the ground with Elliott. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. He hits Beasley right side. And he gets it down to the 32. And they'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. There's gone. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A shotgun snap for gone. It's caught left side by Cooks. 
And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Goff now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Right back to him on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. comes out and that's because the offense did not get the playoff in time and you can see the head coach he is not happy everyone getting away from him right now because he's frustrated that they didn't get the ball snapped in time and now after the delay of game they're operating behind the stick second and 15 following the penalty it's Gurley and he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. They get eight yards back there. They could use another one of those now on third and seven. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing on third. Gone. They got him in. It's Woods. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. A gain of three, second down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now it's gone. And that's complete to Cooks. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Tackle there by Leighton Vander Esch. But well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. The nice footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Rams on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. Out of the gun. Gone. 
Underneath to Davis. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be fourth down. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. When that ball was snapped, they were counting on it being now a one-possession game. Instead, the block occurs. That changes the whole mindset for them. And if you're the guys who just blocked it, you're floating off the field right now. Big-time play. Yeah, big-time play. Could have been a one-score game. Instead, it stays two scores. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Now a play fake here on first down. A dump off to Elliott. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Prescott now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. A second down throw for Prescott. And Beasley with it over the middle. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A Dallas first down, Prescott hooking up with Beasley. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. And look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. This is Elliott. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Throw right side, take it in by Gallup. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Another carry tonight for the workhorse alley. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Prescott now, incomplete. He was looking to get it into his receiver, Cooper, and that takes us from second to third down. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? The Cowboys on third down, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. Here's a give to Smith. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And it's caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Cole Beasley, his second touchdown of the night. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. Here's Goff now on second down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The Rams on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. Gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Goff on first down. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And on third down, the Cowboys bringing an extra defensive back. From the gun, here's Goff. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Cowboys have recovered. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. 
No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing is ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Cowboys on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and four. Prescott from the gun. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Rams' offense, they work their way back on the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. On first down, gone. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Hey, hey, on second and 10, gone. And that is incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. The Rams on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and ten. To the air again. Gone. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game. And I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. And he will go down. A Cowboy sack. Randy Gregory in there to get him for his second sack of the night. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. 
And he'll take this down just shy of the 25 yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Los Angeles.